Hey guys, it's Relaine and welcome back to life and today's episode 5 so we should just get started. We are going to start with the Christian song of the week. Today's Christian song is You Never Let Go by uh, his name? Matt Redman. Um, the song is a personal prayer of a, of a believer who in the midst of trial chooses to trust in God. What neat about it is how much the lyrics are saturated in scripture. Here are several direct, direct, in, indirect <laughs> Bible references in the song you, you Never Let Go. First one. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. From Palms 23a. 3a. Your perfect love is casting out fear. 1 John 4.18 and even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life. Mark 40, 35 through 41. I won't turn back John 6, 6, 6 through 6. G? I know you're near Palms 1, 145, 18. In the pre chorus, I will fear no evil. Palms 20, grade 4, B. For my God is with me. Palms. 20 gray 6 or hair. Uh, and if my God is with me, Palms 46, especially verse 11. Whom then I shall I fear? Palms 27, 1. Whom shall not I fear? Chorus. Oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go. Every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me now. You just realize that's all scriptures. Oh no, you never let go. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. Demeron 3, 31, 6. Joshua 1, 1 true G. To calm through the storm. Elijah 25, 4. Oh no, you never let go. John. 10, 27 to 28. In every high and every low is God's eight, seven, fourteen. Oh no, you never let go. Palms 45, 22. Lord, you never let go of me. Matthew 28, 20. Verse 2. And and I can see the light, John 8, 8 12, that is coming that for the heart that holds on. Palms 27, 14. The, a glorious light beyond the all compare. Matthew 7, 1 to 5, 1 Timony, Timony 6, 16, and there will be an end to these troubles. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 8 to 18. But until that day comes, 1 Theresians 5, 1 through 2, 1 Peter 1, 13. Would live to know you you here on the earth. Corinthians 1, 10 through 11. Chorus. Bridge. Yes, I can see the light. Right, two Corinthians four six that is coming for the for the heart that holds on. Palms nine ninety seven eleven. Palms fifty seven four two seven two. Theresians three five. Hebrews ten thirty five to thirty eight. And there will be an end to these troubles. Two Corinthians four sixteen eighteen. But until that day comes, one Theresians four thirteen to eighteen. Still I will praise you, I still I will praise you. Palms seven seventy one Ephesians five eight. If the song has over one overarching scripture reference, it says Romans eight five eight twenty eight six thirty nine. It's fifty verses thirty eight to thirty nine. For I am convinced that near neither death nor life, angels, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, any powers, neither height or death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is a song. Meditate on the scriptures and enjoy. Now that was the song of the week. And now let's move on to the verse of the week. Oh wait, no, I, I would, wait, no, I did, didn't do it yet. Sorry. One Corinthians, okay, ten thirty-one. So if you eat or if you drink or do anything, do it for the glory of God. 
Paul has provided some specific guidelines in the previous verses about when Christians should eat or in refraining from eating food that have been offered to idols. Those answers gave a broad freedom to those who are visual strong. Sorry, I'm really thirsty. Strong and recognize that God gives a good purpose for everything He has created. 1 Timothy 44 4.44. Scripture has also pro provided careful warning that to moderate how the that freedom can be used. Here, Paul boils everything down to a single pr principle that should drive all our choices. Believers should be motivated to bring glory to God in everything we do. I want God to do. That in this includes nor our choices to eat or drink or to refuse Paul. Paul adds to the list of motivating facts, factors for the use of our freedom in Christ. Will this activity be helpful to me? Will it cause me to be mastered? 1 Corinthians 6 12. Will do, doing this build up others and be good for my neighborhood as well as for myself? 1 Corinthians 10 23 to 24. And now, will this choice up to eat or drink or do anything else to bring glory to God? In all cases, the question of whether this activity will bring me pleasure, material gain, or status should not be the the um, factor alone. Even for those who are tree free in Christ, just as anything done without convention is sin. Romans 4 23. Christians should not participate in anything they don't feel bring bring glory to God. Now that is the verse of the week. Now let's move on to the final segment. Sunday for my childhood or story. Today we're doing another Veggie Tales, Dave and the Giant Pickle. I think starting next week I will do something different. Like stop the Veggie Tales for a while and go then go to something different, like something from Star Chart, like Childhood Channel. Today's Veggie Tales thing is Dave and the Giant Pickle. Let's start off with the plot. The show opens up with Larry dressed as his alter ego, Larry Boy, with a cardboard cutout of the city skyline. Hey, that is straight. <sighs> For his super suction ears by jumping on a cardboard building. He gets stuck as Bob walks out on the countertop. Larry asks Bob help for Bob's help getting down but falls off before Bob can actually help him. When Bob asks Larry to get out of the costume, Larry says he doesn't feel special about his normal self. Bob then mentions that he got a let letter from Myra Exelton from Young Youngstown, Pennsylvania. She says that her siblings are all older than her and can do all kinds of things, but she's too little for any of those things and wonders what's special about her. Bob then tells the story of Dave and the Giant Pickle. A long, long time ago in a country named Israel, Dave, who's played by Junior Asparagus, was a shepherd who lived with his three brothers, Jimmy and Jerry Gord and Tom Gray, who are played by them, and his brother Jesse, Paul, who's played by Paul Grape, every day while they tended his sheep, the sheep would tip over and his other brother, other older brother would pick on him but pick on him by making him pick up their tip sheep over tipped over sheep and get them food. One day their father Jesse comes running to the boys <laughs> to tell them something. He accidentally bumps into a line of sheep and asks Dave to pick them up, which in in irritates alter alterity. Intimidates Dave. Jesse tells his sons that Israel won't sworn enemies that the Philistines are attacking or Philistines, I forgot. In order to defeat them, Israel king K 
King Saul, Arch, who was played by Archibald, is putting together an, ar an army to defeat the Philistines. Dave's brothers head towards the battle. Dave follows them, but stopped by their father. Jesse tells Dave that David was too small to fight in the army and leaves Dave to take care of his sheep himself. Jesse takes the, his three sons to battle. Dave started wondering why little people couldn't do big things too. I kind of remember the little song he sang. He sang, but I forgot how it goes. At the battlefield, the army of Israelites are, was camped out on one hill, while the Philistines Philatine, were on the other hill. The Philistines began to throw, throw insults at the Israelites. Then the two up from Philistines, who's played by Jean Claude and Christopher P. Christopher P. I don't know, it's French. Began to make deal, a deal with the Israelites. The two armies will bring out their great champion. If one of them wins, the losing team will be the winning army slaves. King Saul agrees to offer and Philistines bring out their champion, a giant Hecone named Goliath. The Israelites are frightened by the sight of Goliath and they run away and hide. Goliath comes back every after a day for 40 days to see who would fight him. But every time he showed up, all the Israelites were hiding in hiding. After a while, Jesse begins to worry about his voice. He sends Dave to the campgrounds to deliver some pizza <laughs> on the grounds. Dave sees his brothers hiding from Goliath and overhears Goliath calling the Israelites cowards. Fed up with no one willing to fight Goliath, Dave goes to King Saul and says he will fight Goliath. King Saul has Major doubts that Dave, at his young age, can defeat the Goliath. Dave, the true song, convinces Saul to let him out on the field. Saul tells Dave, Dave to put on his old armor, royal armor. Dave could, Dave, Dave's not fit for the armor. Says he'll com confront Goliath with all he, all he he has with and the will of God. Saul reluctantly lets Dave go out and fight. As Dave heads out for the camp, he stops by a stream and picks up five smooth stones at the camps. Oh, so I'm tired. Dave goes to Goliath and accepts his challenge. Goliath uh, suits up in the box in <laughs> his boxing uniform, heads out in the battlefield and confronts Dave. Dave takes the stone he picked up and uses a slingshot and fling it, flings the stone at Goliath. The stone hits Goliath's head, knocking him completely out. The Israelites are cheering with victory as the Philistines run away in defeat and fear. The story ends with Dave riding his sheep, sheep in, the, in the sunset and falling off. Back on the countertop, Larry is moved by the story and finished by Shogun. The Bible verse of the day is Matthew's 9. 1926. With God, all things are possible. Um, Larry thinks that he can do anything he wants and says that he wants to be a chicken. Bob then corrects him, saying the verse means whatever God wants us to do, we can do. Whatever God wants us to do, we can do. Bob, as Bob leaves the countertop, Larry stays behind to play around as Larry Boy for fun. He then uses his super suction ears to hang onto the camera and get stuck and falls off into onto the kitchen floor. They did have a silly song in the in the in the episode of "I Love My Lips." What time when I turn eight? I forgot the, how it goes. I think the lyrics are on here. There is this really really fast. Okay. Uh, uh, if my lips ever left my mouth, pack a bag and head us off. That'd be too bad. I'll be so sad. I say that'd be too bad. You'll be so sad. That'd be too bad. Alrighty. If my lips said adios, I don't like you. I think you're gross. <laughs> that'd be too bad. I might get mad. Hmm, that'd be too ma bad. You might get mad. That'd be too bad. Fascinating. <laughs> if my lips moved to doofus? Left a mess and took my tooth. That, that'd be too bad. I'll call my dad. 
Oh dear, that'd be too bad. You call your dad. That'd be too bad. Hold on, did you see your father? Fascinating. So what are you saying is, if your lips left you, that'd be too bad. I'd be so sad. I get mad. How am I get mad? I call my dad. That'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. Why? Because I love my life. Lives that start skating. I don't know how to do that. Oh my. Why, this is more serious than I thought. Larry, what do you see here? It <laughs> shows like pictures. <laughs> um, it looks like a lip. What about this? A lip. And this. A lip. 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 Larry, tell me about your childhood. When I was two years old, I left my lips out in the cold and they turned blue. What could I do? Oh dear, they turned blue. What could you do? They turned blue. I see. <laughs> On the day I got my tooth, I had I had to kiss my great aunt Ruth. And she had a beard and it was weird. Mama, she had a beard and it felt weird. <laughs> she had a beard. Oh, oh. Ten days after I turned eight, I got my lips stuck in the gate and all my friends are laughing. And I just stood there until the fire came and broke into the lock and put the crowbar in. So I had to send to next six, next six weeks lip rehabbing with this kid named Oscar who got his, his who got stung on the lip, right on the lip. And we couldn't even talk to each other until the fifth week because all both our lips were so swollen. And when he did start speaking, he just spoke for Spoke, spoke Polish and I only knew only Greek words in Polish except now I don't know because because Oscar taught me the word for lip. Usta! <laughs> Your friends all laugh. Usta. How do you feel that? I don't know. So what you're saying is when you were young they turned blue what could I do? She had a beard and it felt weird. My friends all laughed. Usta! I'm confused. I love my lips. <laughs> And this has been Silly Songs with Larry. Next, tune in next time to hear Larry say, Have I ever told you how to feel about my nose? Oh, look at the time. <laughs> and that is all. I hope you had fun with my quick speech of the, the whole small rapping part. <laughs> See you all next week.